Hey everybody, I thought I would do my recap now of the 1987 Atlanta Braves statistical uh, comparisons from the actual season in 1987 to the History Maker Baseball replay that I just completed. If we look at, uh, first of all, the main team statistics before I go into the um, individual statistics, the team was 69 and 92 in real life, so we I finished three games above that um, at 72 and 89. If we look at the splits on that, you can see uh, home they were almost at 500, but on the road they struggled. They did okay against lefty starters, but uh, righty starters they had trouble with because against lefties they would put in some right-handed hitters like a Gary Renicky and some others uh, that tended to help them. All right, now let's look at some of the other things here. They left on base, uh, them and the opponents, double plays and the opponents, uh, average runs scored, their home runs, differential there. Um, opponents out home with them 173 to 158. If we look at how they did against the individual teams, you will see here they did not have a winning record against any team. They had a chance against the Giants on the last game of the season. They were 9-8 and eight going into that last game, but of course they lost it. Went to 9-9. Nine and nine. And you can see here the odd number here for the Cubs because one of the games got rained out. That's why they played 161 games rather than uh, 162. So against the West, they were pretty decent, 43 and 47, but the East kind of got them, 29 and 42. Particularly the Mets and the Expos, they were four and eight against each one of those clubs. So that kind of you know took them down just a bit. All right, now what I've got, let me go ahead and move this out of the way, and we'll go to the individual statistics. These are the replay statistics for the Braves in the uh, 87 replay that I did. And side by side with them are the, uh, from RetroSheet, are the real statistics. And before I drill down to individual, I thought I would look at some team numbers. According to their real statistics, the Braves hit 163 home runs, I'm sorry, 152 home runs as a team. 152 as a team. In the replay, they hit 158 home runs as a team. So that's pretty close, I would say. 152 to 158 is not that far off. They walked 641 times as a team in the real season, and they walked 655 times as a team in the replay. It's only 14 walks off. They struck out 834 times in the real season, and they struck out here 1,010. So that's the strikeouts there are a little bit high, I don't know if that has to do with the pitchers or whether just certain players. I know there are certain players that had high strikeouts um, in the season, just the way it worked out. And we go to team batting average. They hit 258 as a team on the real season, and they hit 261 in the replay. So other than maybe a slight spike in the strikeouts team-wise, I would say it's pretty good. Let's look at how they, what they, their opponents did. Their opponents had 163 home runs on the real season, and in the replay, their opponents hit 173 home runs. So only 10 extra there for the whole season. They walked 587 of their opponents, drew walks, and in the uh, replay, 598 of their opponents drew walks. So that's only a, an, an addition of 11, so that's not bad at all. Strikeouts were a little spiked, 837 in the replay, 9, I'm sorry, in the season, and 995 in the replay. So in both instances, the strikeouts were a little bit spiked, and I think that's where the game engine maybe has some results that, uh, you know, a lot of results lead to strikeouts. And so if you're really a nitpicker for stats, that could be the one thing or one of the things that stands out. But Really, uh, History Maker Baseball is not about that. It, I mean, it's going to give you a very good um, experience as far as being realistic and whatnot, but every single little jot and tittle is not going to fall in line like you would hope it would maybe for uh, more of a traditional simulation game. But, of course, History Maker Baseball is not a simulation game. It's a totally different experience. However, 
from playing 161 games, I can tell you that playing it through with all the ebbs and flows, the stats that come out of this are still very, very uh, good. All right, now what I did to make it easier to compare individuals is I made a little spreadsheet. The printer got a little fuzzy here on me. But I made a little spreadsheet of the player's actual uh, averages versus their uh, replay averages. So let's take these one at a time, and we'll go through a couple of them just to kind of give you a feel for it. All right, so Ozzy Virgil. Ozzy Virgil, in the uh, actual 87 season, he had an average of 247, 27 home runs, 72 RBIs, and 429 at-bats, 47 walks, and 81 strikeouts. All right, now if we look at the replay statistics and compare them side by side, his average went from 247 to 259. His at-bats went up. I obviously used him more, uh, maybe for pinch hitting and so forth. 429 versus 464 at-bats in the real replay, which is probably why he had three more home runs. He only had 27 in the uh, season, but 30 in the replay. But that could be attributed to the extra 25 at-bats, or actually extra 35 at-bats that I gave him. So that would certainly account for that. 72 RBIs to 86, again, because I used him more. 47 walks to 54 walks, again, because I used him more. And 81 strikeouts to 105. So that's how he uh, turned out. Now, one player that became that was really, really close, and it really I mean, tells you about this game engine, all you need to know, is Gerald Perry. And, of course, I always called him the first baseman, Perry. But those are his actual numbers from the 87 season. He had 270, 533 at bats, 12 homers, 74 RBIs, 48 walks, 63 strikeouts, and 42 steals. All right, let's look and see how he did in the replay. He had 272 in the replay versus the 270. So, you know, you can't get much better than that. 533 at bats he had in the actual season. I used him a lot more, 570. So, uh, I used him a lot more maybe on pinching or I kept him in the game longer. The Braves may have taken him out for double switches or something. It's hard to tell. In the season, he had 12 home runs. In my replay, he had 10. So a little bit off, but not too bad. 74 RBIs in the season, 77 in the replay. Right on the money, just about. 48 walks versus 53. And again, that's because of the extra 37 at-bats he got. He's going to you know, walking five extra times is probably going to be about right. 63 strikeouts to 86. It's a little high. That's 23 more in the 30 summit bats. 42 stolen bases to 39. Now, when I did stolen bases in this game, or I did the replay, I did not do any manager card steals. This is strictly what the book produced. Uh, you know, like when you get a single and active runner steals, that kind of thing. So the book, uh, by the book or out of the book, it's, it's replicating the stolen base prowess pretty well, I would say. I'm a little low, but not too bad. I mean, I could have probably bumped it up a little bit had I, you know, used some manager cards to, uh, to get him to steal. But, hey, you know, don't do that all the time necessarily. All right. Let's look at some other key ones here. I'll, I'll skip a couple and go to the next one. Ken Obergfell. Ken Obergfell hit 280 on the real season with 508 bats. Three homers, 48 walks, 48, I'm sorry, 48 RBIs, 48 walks, only 29 strikeouts, and three steals. So he hit 280 on the season. On the replay, he hit 284, so that's pretty good. He had 525 at bats versus, versus 508. He had three home runs, just like he did in the actual season. He had 45 RBIs, and he had 48 in the actual season. His walks were a little up, 60 versus the 48 there. The big difference was his strikeouts. He struck out 52 times in my replay versus only 29 uh, in the actual season. Part of that, he was rated as a um, semi-good eye. So maybe I think perhaps he, if he were rated a good eye instead of a semi-good eye, that might have knocked off about maybe about 10 of those strikeouts probably would have been wiped out. So, uh, But again, that's... That's if you're real nitpicky on statistics. If you're just doing a, a, a bird's eye view from the top, 280 to 284, three home runs each way, 48 RBIs versus 45 RBIs. I'd say if you look at those, that's probably the three things you would look at the most, home runs, RBIs, and batting average. 
and Obergefell is right there on all of them. So uh, not bad there at all. Let's look at Murphy because people, you know, follow Murphy. That's the Braves. But before that, we'll do we'll do uh, Deion James because his numbers are pretty good as well. As is Griffey. Let's go to Griffey. Griffey hit 286 in the season. Re- I'm sorry, in the actual season, 399 uh, at bats, 14 home runs, 64 RBIs, 46 walks, 54 strikeouts, and four steals. In the replay, he hit 289. So you're talking 286 to 289. He had 398 at bats in my replay, 399 in the season. He had 13 home runs in my replay, 14 in the season. He had 74 RBIs in my replay, only 64 in the season. So obviously he had some opportunities where he got some uh, people on base in front of him. 46 walks here, 46 walks there. 54 strikeouts to 63, so a tiny bump. And then four steals, exactly the same. All right, let's look at Deion James. In the season replay, or actual season, he had 312 with the 494 at bats, 10 homers, 61 RBIs, 70 walks, 63 strikeouts, and 10 steals. In my season replay, he hit 310. So 310 to 312, right on the button. I had I gave him some more at bats, probably as a pinch hitter than he did in real life. So he was up to 529 versus the 494. He fell one homer short. He was nine here, ten there. His walks, I'm sorry, his RBI, 63 to 61, pretty much right there on the money. 72 walks to 70 walks, 63 strikeouts to 63 strikeouts, and six steals to 10 steals. So the game board didn't give him quite as many steals as he had in real life. But, again, I could have used manager cards for that to account for that. Let's look at Murphy. This is one where his batting average is a little bit lower, but his power numbers were kind of up. Uh, but I also gave him a lot more at bats as well. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why he, you know, I produced more at bats in the replay. I played him the same amount of games, so I don't don't understand what happened there. But oh well, they may have taken him out for some other purposes or double switches or something. But in the actual season, he had 295, and in my replay, he had 277, 566 at bats, whereas I had 628 at bats. So you're talking 34 and 28 that's uh, 62 more at bats so that's why he had six more home runs because he had 62 more at bats and that's why he had 142 rbis versus 105 he walked 115 in the actual season he only walked 96 in the replay but his strikeout totals were up 136 there 157 there but again the extra abs probably had something to do with that he stole 16 in the real season only eight in the replay so the fact he wasn't active probably had something to do with that. Um, but, of course, when you got a player like Gerald Perry who is active, those steal numbers were right on the button. Um, the rest of the players are kind of marginal, not, nothing really there to, to, to dwell on. So we'll go to the pitching. And we'll go to the pitchers that threw a lot of innings. And, of course, the way I used these pitchers in the replay were some of them, especially the relief pitchers, were, were way off. I used some guys a lot more than I probably should have. Uh, but we'll look at Zane Smith. He was their number one starter in the '87 season. He was 15 and 10 with a 4.09 ERA in 36 games, 242 innings, 245 hits, 19 home runs, 91 walks, 130 strikeouts. In my replay, he was 14 and 13 with a 4.13. So you compare 15 and 10, 4.09 with a 14 and 13, 4.13 ERA. That's pretty good, I think. 242 innings pitched in real life. I didn't let him pitch as much. I took him out a little bit often, maybe, but 233. Hits allowed, 245 in the real season, 243 in the replay. And, again, it's nine less innings, so that's probably has something to do with that. He did give up more home runs in the replay, 24 versus only 19. Let's see, he walked 91, and in my replay he walked 67, so he had a little bit better control. But he struck out a lot more. He only struck out 130 in the real season. Struck out 171 in the replay. So, again, I think if there's any particular category where it spikes a little bit, it's the strikeouts are up in history maker baseball versus the real seasons. Let's look at maybe a relief pitcher um, because there's some guys there that uh, – let's look at Tom Glavin because he, he started pitching later in the season. Tom Glavin was 2-4 and four in real life with a 5.54 ERA in nine games, 15 and a third innings, 55 hits, 5 home runs, 33 walks, 20 strikeouts. 
In my replay, he wasn't two and four, he was four and three. His ERA dropped from 5.54 to 5.19. He pitched 15 to third innings in the actual season and 15 to third innings in my replay. Gave up 55 hits in the season, gave up 56 hits in the replay. Gave up five home runs in the season, gave up five home runs in the replay. Walked 33, walked 26, struck out 20, walk, uh, struck out 18. So actually his strikeouts were a little bit down. But uh, actually very, very close numbers there, I would say. All right, let's look at some of the guys who pitched a lot. Well, first let's look at my buddy Paul Ostermacher because I dogged him out all year long in my replay. All the reports I've called him. I gave him little nicknames, which I won't say on video now, but uh, but you can you know <laughs> use your imagination. In the real season, he was 1-1, one one, two saves with a 5-10 ERA. 52 games played, 54 and two-thirds innings. 58 hits, 8 home runs, 24 walks, 39 Ks. In my replay, he was 2-7 and seven with 3 saves. So he went from 1-1 one and one and 2 saves to 2-7 and seven and 3 saves. His ERA jumped from 5.10 to 6.35. I used him 11 more innings than he did in real life, so I was a glutton for punishment, obviously. His hits were down uh, per inning. He, he had less than a hit per inning because here he was over a hit per inning. Here he was less than a hit per inning. I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry, take that back. I was looking at the wrong column. 63 is the games played, so he played 52 in the real season. I used him 63. That's my own fault. He pitched 82 innings in my replay. He only pitched 54 and two-thirds in the season, so, again, I'm using a lot more. 81 hits allowed versus 58, but, again, that's, you know, based on usage. Eight home runs he allowed in the real season. He allowed only six in the replay, so it was good on the, the hits and everything. No, I'll take it back. He allowed eight. I was in the wrong column. He did allow eight. So it was eight to eight. 24 walks, 39 Ks, 36 and 50. So he had 15 more strikeouts than he did walks in the real season. He had 14 more strikeouts than he did walks in the replay. So pretty good there, I thought. Let's look at the closer, Jim Acker. In the... Uh, I use him a lot more as a closer than Atlanta did in the season because they split time with him and Garber, but I kind of just made Acker my uh, closer from the get-go as much as I could. 4-9, 14 saves, 4.16 ERA, 68 games, 114 and two-thirds innings. So they used him a lot in long relief for two or three innings at a time. I rarely did that. Um, 109 hits, 11 home runs, 51 walks, and 68 strikeouts. Now I had him at 5-6. and six, with 25 saves, but I also pitched him in 86 games, but fewer innings. He pitched 114 and two-thirds. He only pitched 109 for me in, in basically 18 more games. Uh, so that's interesting there. He pitched five less innings in 18 more games. All right, 109 hits allowed in the season. He allowed 120 in the replay. 11 home runs in the season, 13 in the replay. He walked 51. 67 in the replay, struck out 68, struck out 75 in the replay. But again, I used him a lot more than um, you know than than they did. It's just the, the way it was used or the usage that went on there. Look at some of the fielding statistics, and uh, these are the replay fielding statistics. I um, let's see what happened to my. Here we go. We have the fielding statistics here that are printed off from real life. So I'll try to highlight a few of these. Let's look at the catchers. Look at Ozzie Virgil. 997 fielding percentage for Ozzie Virgil. He was only 989 in the replay. So he was able to avoid probably some of those uh, plate drama checks. Gerald Perry, or first baseman Perry, fielded 987 in the replay. He was a 990 fielder in real life in that season. So that's pretty good. If we look at Glenn Hubbard, he fielded 984 in my replay. He was 986 fielder in real life. Short, uh, third baseman Obrick fell, 953 in my replay, 979 in real life. That could be partially due to me because a lot of these errors that came up, sometimes I just assigned them randomly. I didn't use a particular thing, so I may have given Obrick fell a few more errors than he probably should have gotten. Jeff Blauser, uh, 957 in my replay, 963 in real life. And let's go to the outfielders. That's maybe where it's going to show up a little bit more. 
Uh, Ken Griffey, 970 in my replay, 953 in real life. So Griffey in real life on his fielding, if we look at his fielding in left field, if I can find it here, where are you, Ken Griffey? Uh, where'd you go? There you are. All right, so in real life, Ken Griffey, and I realize I'm getting a little anal with all these statistics. Uh, he committed seven errors, committed seven errors, 183 putouts and seven errors, where in my replay he had 159 putouts and only one error. So a lot less errors um, in that respect. Albert Hall in center field, 972. He was 981 in um, real life. Deion James did not make an error in my replay. And in the real 87 season, Deion James was a 995 fielder. He did make three errors. Murphy, 977 in the uh, actual uh, replay, 327 putouts and 14 assists or 14 errors, I should say, and eight assists. So he had 14 errors there. In mine, he only had two errors. Now, another thing, too, is you notice he had 327 putouts in right field, and the replay only had 173. That's one of the things in the fielding with the outfielders. The majority of the plays, and you can see them here by the totals, the center fielders made 524 putouts which was basically more than the other two combined, or just about the same as the other two combined. In fact, I'm going to add them up real quick. 289, I should have done that earlier. 289 and 178, 7, 6. Yeah, it's more. Uh, when you combine them all together, it's 467. So the center fielders had more putouts than the left fielders and the right fielders put together. And that's just uh, entries in the book as well. We've got a lot of the entries in the book, particularly on the chemistry charts and some of these other charts, say the center fielder makes the play. So, again, that's totally out of line for what you would expect or or have expectations for in history of baseball. I'm just going to the depths of the earth with statistics for those of you who are curious. But, again, this kind of stuff, bothers me not because that's not what this is about is the main things for me to see how they do is if they've got a decent average that's close to it with home runs and rbis that are close to it those three things those three things fit the bill for me and the more i looked at these stats I actually now that i'm comparing them for myself this is the, really the first time i'm doing the in-depth comparison back and forth and actually Full disclosure here is actually history maker baseball is exceeding my expectations. I did not think they would be this close, but they certainly are, certainly were, I should say. Um, so, you know, say what you want to about how this game is put together with qualities versus hardcore statistics, but you got to remember the qualities are based on hardcore statistics. So, but you're doing a range versus a a static number so you know if a guy's a hero or whatever he's going to hit a certain average that meant he didn't get that hero quality just by chance he gets it by the way he did in, in real life so again while this game is very fun to play you can throw the elements of chemistry in there you get the game day checks in there um, all that kind of fun stuff in the end, at, as to borrow a Stephen A. Smith quote, at the end of the day, I think he was the first one that started using that quote, at the end of the day, the statistics actually line up very well, and I would put them up against any other sports simulation board game out there, to be honest with you. Um, so to me, this is my go-to game. I mean, it's it's proven itself in this replay that I can play this game with any major league team, any major league season, and I can play through a season and be just as happy with the results, statistically speaking, as I would be if I played any of the other sports simulation games. And you know which ones they are. I'm not going to um, say them or put them out there. You know who they are. And I play them too. I play five or six different sport, uh, baseball board games. So, I played them pretty much all. If they're out there, except for maybe a few of the newer ones, most of the traditional ones I've played. And I can honestly say that this has 
you know, fit the bill. And for anybody out there that was curious about that or wondering, you know, how realistic is this game, I'm here to tell you it's you can't ask for anything more uh, out of this game. Now, if you play it once in a while, you may not see that, but if you play it over the long haul, you're going to get the results that you uh, are happy with and believable for sure. And the teams are going to perform just like they did in real life. I mean, you're going to get the guys to hit home runs the way they're supposed to. You're going to get the pitchers that win games when they're supposed to. You're going to get the closers that make the saves. You're going to get the meatball pitchers that give up all the home runs and have high ERAs. You're going to have that there too. That's why they're strugglers and workmen. I mean, that's the, there's a reason why you're given those qualities. There's a reason why aces and stars are called aces and stars. There's a, I, don't, I hate to use the term method behind the madness, but because I don't think what Keith is doing here is madness at all. I think it's very well calculated. It's just a, it, it, it's, it puts a different face on it by giving the qualities versus the hardcore stats. You know, instead of saying, oh, Gerald Perry, he's a 291 hitter or he's a 270 hitter, we can say, oh, no, Gerald Perry, he's a hero. You know, that just it's just another way of encapsulating the qualities of Gerald Perry. Same thing with Dale Murphy. You can say he's a home run king. You can say he's had forty four home runs, or you can say he's a home run king. You know, how do you want to, how do you want to call it? Either way you go, um, it's there. So anyway, that's my final verdict, or as to not to plagiarize a term from Steve Tower, but after my further review, this is what I've come up with. It's I'm sold. Not that I wasn't sold before, but I'm definitely sold now as far as the accuracy of this game and the way it plays out. When you add to it the fun components of the other things that come with the game, the umpires, the the chemistry, the uh, game day checks, dissonant, all that good stuff, uh, using the player experience and whatnot, it all works. So. I don't know what else to say. Uh, I, I, I give you example or exhibit A and B. I guess I'm exhibit B because Al Wilson was exhibit A with the 1977 Phillies. So he took a good team and got very credible results. I took a lousy team and got credible results. So we've been to both ends of the spectrum um, to show this game that it, it, whether you're a good team or a bad team, it's going to perform like a good team or a bad team. So... I give it my two thumbs up. I give it my gold seal of approval. Um, I don't know what else I can say to more accolades I can give this game than I already have. I would just say if you haven't gotten it already, please do so. It'll be well worth your uh, investment dollar and entertainment dollar. And uh, if you don't like the the real seasons or you know MLB, MLB seasons, pick up a fictional set. It's very fun. It, they're, they're, it's really fun to play. It's actually kind of addictive to play after a while. Um, you can get going on these things. You just want to keep rolling to another game, another game, another game. And uh, that's about it. That's all I got. I mean, I've exhausted my accolades for the game. Thanks to uh, Steve Tower for introducing me to this game two years ago through his videos. Thanks to Al Wilson for also uh, putting out videos uh, back in, you know, about two years ago that really sold me on this as well with the detailed descriptions and playthroughs. Thanks to Keith for creating such a great game and also for the great customer service. Anytime I have a question, I just email Keith or send him something on Facebook, and, and he's really good about getting back to me. It's very personable. Um, so, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm talking to a friend, even though I've never met these people. I feel like I'm talking to friends. So, you know, I get my highest accolades. Um, that's it. I mean, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I've said everything I can say about it. It's uh, it's a winner. That's uh, all I'm going to say. And uh, to borrow a history maker term, I'd say this game is an ace. It's an ace and a star, and it's a champion. So that's it from here. The 1987 Braves season replay to test this game engine is now over. It's in the books, and I was quite pleased with the results. And uh, now I can move on to doing other projects with History Maker Baseball. And what I plan on doing, either in January or late January or early February, 
is play madness, and that's going to be uh, taking off the March Madness basketball tournament. We'll have a 32-team single elimination tournament using the best uh, history maker baseball teams I have on hand. Uh, full teams, not individual players, but full teams, and doing them in a season replay in bracket style. And uh, there'll be a couple extra teams added in for play-in games, so I think I have 36 total. And uh, we'll see how that goes. But right now, my History Maker Baseball 87 Atlanta Braves replay is done. And like I said, it's two thumbs up all the way around. If you haven't gotten this game, please do so. If you're interested in baseball at all, even if you're not, it's still a fun game. Pick it up. Pick up a copy. And roll those roll those dice and, and enjoy yourself. And you'll be surprised about how uh, entertaining and fun this game is and how realistic at the same time. So that's it from here. I uh, wish everybody a happy new year. hope you had a great Christmas. Wish you a happy new year, 2018. Hopefully it will be a great season for History Maker Baseball and all the Play.com games. I'm actually going to start dabbling into Hockey Blast. I'm going into you know where angels fear to tread kind of thing because I'm not a big hockey guy, but I'm going to try it. I'm I bought Hockey Blast about a year and a half ago, and I tinkered with it here and there. But I think I'm going to print out Al Wilson's big board and and uh, give it a go as I've kind of gotten into watching hockey just a little bit. So I'm just trying to learn the inner strategies and whatnot and all the players and so forth. So I'm giving that a go. So until next time, as usual, I will see you all down the road.